Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Kowalski, your reading coach, and I'm here to read Pickles to Pittsburgh, which is a sequel, or the follow-up book, to Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. This book is written and colored by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. Get the pickles underneath. Pickles, pickles, pickles. Dear Henry and Kate, I'm having the best vacation ever, but I don't get much rest. I really wish you were here. Our group travels around in a big blue bus, and somehow it manages to climb up and down the tallest and bumpiest mountains, and around some of the biggest plants I've ever seen. We visited many unusual places, met the local people, and even helped them out with some of their chores. I'm taking lots of pictures because this place is hard to believe. Can't wait till I see you next Thursday. Love and hugs, Grandpa. We all miss Grandpa an awful lot. His Saturday morning pancakes, his mostly funny jokes, and especially his wonderful bedtime stories. Tomorrow would be Thursday and he'd be home. We could hardly wait to hear where he'd been and what he'd done. To pass the time, we helped Mom make spaghetti and meatballs for dinner. Henry made the largest meatballs we had ever seen. They barely fit into the pot. Mom thanked us for helping, but asked that the meatballs be much smaller next time. Look how big those meatballs are. Crazy. After we finished eating, Henry and I cleared the table so we could help bake a special welcome home cake for Grandpa. It was chocolate with strawberry icing and made in the shape of Grandpa's face. We licked as much of the batter off the spoons as we possibly could. I don't know about you, but... <laughs> That doesn't look that much like Grandpa. I took Grandpa's postcard up to my room and I put it on the little table beside my bed. I kept staring at it and wondering. The lamplight made a bright photograph of a wonderful place that seemed somehow familiar. I said goodnight to it and drifted off into my dreams. Surrounded by milky blue skies and with Henry as my co-pilot, we carefully steer our plane through large puffs of mist. Soon, we find ourselves soaring over an island, a very lumpy island. From the air, it looks like a gigantic feast. Immense, that means really big. Vegetables, salads, desserts lie beneath us. This mountain looks like huge loaves of bread. I do like the fluffy clouds. It does look like lots and lots of food everywhere. We decide to take a closer look and prepare ourselves for a bumpy landing, avoiding some broccoli and narrowly missing some tremendous hamburger on an oversized bun. We come down and taxi on what appears to be a giant strip of crispy bacon. Henry and I step down from the plane and look around in awe. So there they are landing. There's the landing strip of bacon and the big huge burger. Right? Here's another big huge bun. Henry and I step down from the plane and look around in awe. Before us lies a strange but wonderful landscape. We are surrounded by larger-than-life vegetables. Nearby is a lake that smells like breakfast, bordered by leafy jungles of lettuce that resemble a tossed salad. Could you imagine living with the eggs? The frogs are their lily pegs, are eggs. Oh my God, that's crazy. Crazy, I can imagine. We try to keep our balance as we walk around the top of the gigantic bagel and past a forest of towering carrots. One is pierced by a tunnel large enough to drive a car through. I don't know, they're bagels, but they kind of look like donuts too, right? And big, tall carrots you could walk right through. Off in the distance, we see popcorn snowing down onto the peaks of enormous rolls. Way above our heads, high up in the trees that look like broccoli, chubby birds are nesting in a huge shredded wheat biscuits. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Cookies and broccoli, big slices of cake. Oh my gosh, he has a hot dog in his mouth. Ahead of us at the end of a long road lies what looks like an abandoned town. Eager to know where we are, we start walking toward it. 
sweet-smelling rain begins to fall, and it collects in hundreds of open containers that are lined up in a field beside the road. Lots of orange puddles are everywhere because it's raining orange juice. Orange juice. Wow, that must smell lovely. All of a sudden, we find ourselves standing in the shadow of a giant tuna fish sandwich, being delicately airlifted by helicopter. In the distance, another helicopter races off with a giant pickle in tow. So see, tuna fish sandwich, he's got the big pickle. Could you imagine? When we reach what is left of the town, we see remnants of a sign welcoming us to Chew and Swallow. Somehow I know I've heard that name somewhere before. <laughs> Look at all them spaghetti all around. <laughs> Chew and Swallow. Large reservoirs of milk and cream flow into the extra large containers, which are all lined up and ready to be loaded onto a ship. Printed on the sides of the trucks are the words, Falling Food Company, Large Food for Large and Small Countries Free. There we go. One of the workers tells us that Chew and Swallow used to be a very ordinary little town, except that instead of weather, food rained down from the sky for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That would be something I would love to see. Back then, he says, by some quirk of nature, the falling food grew larger and larger and larger. Storms of gigantic food threatened normal life, so people took their belongings and they sailed away to a new land on rafts made of huge pieces of stale bread. So see, they're sailing off. The weather just got so bad and big, they were feeling like it would, could be dangerous. They were feeling threatened. They returned years later to see what had happened to Chew and Swallow. They discovered endless food supply and decided to create Falling Food Company. Can all that food, falling food everywhere. They never, never have a lack of food to eat. Now, daily shipments are made to all parts of the world, from the smallest town to the largest cities. As soon as the food lands, it's wrapped, boxed, bottled, packaged, and sent out to people who need it. What a good idea. So they go north, they go south, east, and west. They bring the food to whoever needs it. What a good idea. That way there's no waste. Even with poverty and drought, poverty means you don't have a lot of money and drought means not a lot of water, right? Throughout the world, right? So there's lots of parts of the country and different countries where people don't always have everything they need. There is always enough food for everyone. See, if that was big, huge, giant hamburger fell in the middle of your town, don't you think everybody would have enough to share? I like that idea. Other trucks sag under the weight of immense artichokes, enormous eggplants, massive peas and carrots. Foot-long veal cutlets are stacked up to be packed for shipping. Get all those people hard at work to make sure everybody is fed. To the east, the weather is changing and we can see sandwiches raining down. As soon as they land, they're piled neatly up, ready for shipment on a freighter anchored down by the shore. See, they're getting everything all ready to take to places that need it. We walk through the entire town in amazement. I would be amazed if I was there. Look at that crazy, is that a turkey or a chicken? And then a big, huge ice cream cone. Up ahead, lots of workers wearing helmets and dressed in matching uniforms are loading huge potatoes onto a truck. Henry and I think that this is a great idea. We wish we could stay and work here, but I don't think they hire kids. It's getting late and we hate to leave, but we really do have to be heading home. 
Mom is expecting us for dinner, and the workers give us a two-foot-wide chocolate chip cookie, which we carry back to the plane. It barely fits in the door. Well, that was sure nice of them. Maybe they'll share it with Grandpa. Did you see the plane is a big Coca-Cola bottle? <laughs> we buckle up, I rev the engine, and we start rolling down the bacon runway. Everyone waves goodbye, and we see dinner approaching from the west. Spaghetti and meatballs, I think. As we gain altitude, chew and swallow slowly vanishes into the distance. My alarm clock woke me with a jolt. It was finally Thursday, and I wanted to get to school fast. The sooner I got there, the sooner I'd get home, and the sooner I would see Grandpa. So exciting. When we got home, we ran as fast as we could into Grandpa's waiting arms. I brought back something for you, said Grandpa, and he gave us each a very large box containing a chocolate chip cookie he had gotten on his trip. They were the biggest we had ever seen, almost two feet wide. Mom and Grandpa, Mom made Grandpa's favorite dinner, chicken and dumplings, and we were surprised with his favorite cake that said, Welcome home. He chose the part we made that had his mustache. By the time dinner was done, it was late and Grandpa was tired. When he was all tucked in bed, we knocked on the door to give him an extra goodnight kiss. Then I told Grandpa the most wonderful tall tale bedroom story, bedtime story he had ever heard. It began with, surrounded by milky blue skies and with Henry as my co-pilot, Grandpa stayed awake till the very end. Then he looked at us with a funny glint in his eye and said, wait till I show you the pictures I took on my trip. And then he drifted off into wonderful dreams. I wonder if those pictures are just like the ones that they had. And here's a mat. It says popcorn flurries, orange juice drizzle, rolling thunder, pea soup fog, pizza blizzard, soda showers, spaghetti and meatball front, frosty flakes. So this is all the weather that makes all the food come to town. I hope you enjoyed my read aloud. It's kind of a crazy, silly book, but it's a nice thought that if we had all that extra food, we definitely could share it with people who need it. Have a great one.